the brand new Copilot app builder agent is now out in Frontier, and it lets users build applications without writing any code. The impacts of this are massive, so you definitely need to know about this. Let's break down how this works and see if it'll create me an app that actually runs. Let's get into it. So the App Builder agent is available as part of your M365 Copilot licensing. This thing will actually build out a fully coded application, uh, similar to how Power Apps are, but on a smaller scale. Think personal use, departments, teams, uh, you know, small groups of people. Don't think enterprise apps. That's not the point of this thing. But it does have data uh, backing it, and it's all stored in a brand new SharePoint site ones created for every single application. So let's jump over to uh, the Copilot app where I've got the uh, app builder pulled up. And let's let's just kind of take a look at what we've got here. We have a prompt box. This is how you're going to be interacting with this. This is how you're going to create an app. And it's also the experience when you need to update that app because this isn't just a one shot operation. After you build it, you can test it. You can make updates to it. Uh, and all all you have to do for that is just tell, talk to the app builder agent. It will handle all of the code changes and all that kind of stuff. And I already hear what you're saying. This thing can create code. Are you sure like this is a good idea, Steve? Like by the whole vibe coding thing? There are a number of safety precautions or safety measures in place with this. So, for example, you can't access the code that this thing creates. You can't edit it. You can't you can't get it access to it whatsoever. It's stored in Power Platform and out of reach for from anyone. So that's a good thing because the end users that would be the audience, the, the target audience for this agent, they don't need to worry about code anyway. If they were coders, even low coders, they'd be in Power Apps making making some uh, making something there. But let's go ahead and get started here. Um, I've got a prompt I'm going to copy in. And it's a use case that actually is uh, very relevant for me and, and the people I work with. So the prompt says, I want to create an app to help me and my team pick who has to run the next meeting. We call it the Wheel of Misfortune. Sound familiar? It should be a spinner type random selector where a pointer spins around a wheel, slowing down until it lands on a person's name. I, I want to be able to manage the list of names as well. So, you know, we have weekly meetings and a lot of times people just obviously they hate going to meetings in a lot of cases and they especially hate it when they're the one who has to run the meeting. So this is kind of a fun thing. We've been using some other commercial or uh, some some free thing out there, but I thought, hey, it'd be cool if this thing could just make it for me. So I'm going to click on this. Uh, send button so this thing will actually start to get to work this this can take a while it can definitely take five minutes easily because there's a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes you see a little bit of information here but we can actually click this thing out and you'll see it going through a, a series of steps you know, all the way from envisioning what this solution is figuring out what the requirements will be beginning to write out all of the code. Again, you don't see it, but you see that it is beginning to actually build things out. And then you get the final product, uh, or at least the first iteration, because again, you can go back and edit these things. So we've got to wait for this thing to finish. But, but while you're waiting, this is a great time to mention my SharePoint in Copilot Insights newsletter. It comes out every single week. It's completely free. And it covers all of the roadmap items and major announcements by Microsoft. So if you're interested, there's a link in the description below so you can get signed up and know about things like this app builder agent right as soon as it comes out. Let's check back in and see what's happening here. So if you, we see it's understanding the project setup. It's beginning the data schema updates, identifying core features, core pages. So it, it's, it, it's a very methodical process that this thing is going through. And this is really, it is a little similar, I'd say, to the recent announcement uh, just a few days ago at the Microsoft Ignite conference, the vibe coding experience for Power Apps. So it's a, it's a similar concept to how this is going to work, where it's a chat-only experience and then you get an application. 
but on the Power App side, it's made so that you do can you do get access to the code, and you are expected to make updates, you know, through code if necessary, or through the UI through like traditional development. This is going to be for end users, so that they're not having to submit IT requests every time they need some little application. They don't have to wait; they can self-service themselves their, their their applications and it's really really cool i mentioned that this is going to be powered by a sharepoint site there's a brand new site uh, created you do need either admin rights or you need the self-service site creation feature enabled in your environment so that users can create this because this is still going to be using their their permissions and a, a normal user can't create a site unless you know that permission is enabled I'm running this right now as a global admin, just my normal account in here. So there's not going to be any issues, but it is really cool that SharePoint is the data source. You can't use Dataverse. You can't use anything else except for SharePoint. So again, it limits the focus a bit, but it also is very convenient because all of our data is inside SharePoint, right? Or most of it. Okay. Most of it is inside SharePoint. The, 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 I'd say the majority. Um, if certainly files and things like that. And that's that's great because this is where you have a, you're, the most protection on your data is on that SharePoint environment. It's also where you're backing it up. Well, you are backing it up, right? Think your cloud data is safe just because it's in Microsoft 365 or Google Workspace? Think again. Accidental deletions, ransomware, and compliance gaps can still put your business at risk. AFI is a next-gen backup and recovery platform built for modern cloud environments, including Microsoft 365, Google Workspace, Azure, AWS, and Kubernetes. It offers full fidelity restores, encrypted full-text search, version history, and even self-service recovery, so users can get back data without waiting on IT. And when ransomware hits, AFI detects it early and automatically backs up your data before damage is done. Over 10,000 organizations trust AFI to protect their cloud data. If you care about uptime, compliance, and peace of mind, it's time to back up smarter with AFI. So the App Builder agent finished up. Um, it, it gives us a summary of what it, what it has created. It tells us that the app has been built. It's just called Wheel of Misfortune. It uh, gives us the URL to the list. We can click on this. And it'll take us into that brand new SharePoint site that it built on its own. And we can click, we can go to site contents and we can see the, uh, the, the one custom list here that jumps out at me is members. So this looks like um, this is the list that will be powering the Spinner app. Now there's a number of like limitations and caveats and and other things to know about that especially with this list but before we get into that let's actually just start just test this thing out and see does it work now to get access to this you're not going to be going into power apps or anything in fact the applications built with the app builder agent are you have to go launch them from within the app builder agent let me show you what i mean we go back to app builder below that prompt box and some of the um, the starter prompts you'll see the list of apps this is how you'll be accessing all of your agents that are built here they, they are done from within the app that way again these aren't enterprise apps they should not be accessible from an i guess an easy to access way they are supposed to be for small use cases. They can do a lot. They don't, don't get me wrong. These things can be quite powerful, but they're not intended as enterprise apps. They are more personal uh, or, or team oriented apps. But you'll see the app here. We can click on the ellipsis and then click on play. And it didn't work. Okay, so not too surprising. I've had very mixed results with this. Let's see if we can get this thing. Let's try it again. No, still something is broken with this. This this happens. I'd say I've got a 50% success rate so far with the app builder. Let's try a different one. And let's type in, um, I need a spinner app. I, for some reason, I'm just sticking with the spinner app theme. To pick a restaurant. 
I also want to be able to manage the list. Keep it simple and just let it go. We'll fast forward through this experience and, uh, and come back when this thing is all complete. Now our application has finished. Uh, I don't know if this is even going to work or not, but we're going to test it out anyway. Let's go check out that SharePoint list. Let's make sure everything looks good there. Okay, did create the site. We see the restaurants list here. Um, it's neat that it already loads this stuff up with sample data. So you don't, you aren't starting with a blank list. This, this is a brand new agent though. Bear in mind, it's going to have bugs. Probably a lot of bugs, especially considering this is kind of a vibe coding thing. And that, that could be hit or miss uh, as, as technology is trying to catch up with what our expectations are for this experience. So we go back to App Builder. We see, uh, we see the old application here, maybe a refresh. And then we go back and check the vibe coding. And then we go check the app builder and the app is not showing up while it may take a little bit of time before that shows up. Let me just click on play here. Nope. That one's still broken. We here, here's what we can do. Let's click the pencil icon. This takes us back into the editor so we can tell it, Hey, this thing's broken. Hey, this thing is broken. Let's see if it can fix it. It may, it may ask us a little bit of clarifying questions to understand how it's broken. But look, it, it's investigating the current app structure and the error. So it is really actually pretty impressive how it will start to try and diagnose uh, issues and things like that. Obviously, the more detail you give it, the better the information is that comes back or the better the output, certainly. So it's working on trying to fix that one app. We're waiting for the second app to show up. But right now, this is a great time to say that if you've gotten some value from this video so far, or at least a little entertainment, since these things just didn't work out the way I had hoped, then click that like button and subscribe to my channel. I make a ton of content around M365 Copilot and especially agents. That's kind of my, my big passion right now is agent development. And if you're interested in custom training for your organization, especially around agents, just shoot me an email. So all, eight, all three tasks are completed. It's performing final validation. And then we will see, was it able to get this app working? I would definitely caution you that it is going to take some patience working with a, a vibe coding agent like this. So... Uh, if you if you're the patience type, if you're the type that wants to to make it work, and you you're, you've got that persistence, I think you're really going to like this. Okay, our in a spin and dine a, a, a app is ready, but let's check out the wheel of misfortune. Nope, still broken. Okay, well I give up on that one then. Not that I don't have the patience, because I mean I'm working with technology after all. But um, let's just go check out that spin and dine one. Two for two. All right. Two for two. Or well, I guess that's over to it, isn't it? Uh, so, all right. That one's broken too. I swear I was testing this before I hit record, but you know what? It's worth, it's worth it just leaving this in to let you know, Hey, this is a brand new product and this is in frontier. This is not in general availability. This isn't even in public preview. This is before that public preview really even starts. So your mileage may vary when it comes to this, but I can say that this has made some applications for me in the past. In fact, the spin and dine, that's the one that I did build out uh, before this. But for some reason, it is just not wanting to work. So I'm not sure what that is about. Um, things will improve and I will probably revisit this in the future and give it some more complex things, uh, assuming of course it actually can do the simple ones. Now there are some known limitations currently at the, as of the time of recording, aside from uh, the potential, uh, the, the possibility of broken apps, but images are ignored during the app generation. So if you, you know, if you add them for reference, okay, great. Um, maybe if you uh, upload a wireframe, it'll probably help it to do things, but it's not like it's going to take those images and put them inside the application. Another interesting thing is that the list columns that 
are being built out in SharePoint are read only. You can't edit them after the fact. You could, you know, manage the data and all that, but you can't change the column. And I actually, I want to look at that too, because what does that look like? Column settings, edit. Can we change this? What if we were to change this yes, no column to multiple lines of text? Well, it, it, it seems to work. Multiple lines of text. Okay, well, give it a refresh. I mean, it it sure looks like that. Maybe this has, is no longer an issue. I, I'm not sure, but that is in the notes um, in the article that goes into a lot more detail about the the app builder agent. You'll see that link down in the description below. Another interesting note is that the app name is fixed. Once it creates it, you can't rename the app. Maybe that has something to do with just its limitation to the Power Platform uh, APIs. Maybe it's not fully built out. Uh, but along those API, the lines of the API, you cannot have this call an external API. Uh, again, that's more of an enterprise app scenario. And they are making sure that you can't use this for enterprise app development. Uh, this is this for small use cases, uh, again, individuals, teams, that kind of thing. And the biggest one, which is a really great thing, is that the code this thing generates, can't, you can't view it, you can't see it, you can't edit it, you can't modify it, you can't do anything with this thing. All you can do is delete that agent when you're done with it. That's it. And it is intentional so that people can't try and reverse engineer any of this stuff, I think. It's 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 really making it very clear the difference between a personal application or a team application versus an enterprise one that would be developed in something like full-blown React code by a full-stack developer or uh, Power Apps if for for the for you low coders out there, or you know some other technology where it is traditional application development, this is an entirely different use case. They are making sure that those enterprisey types of things cannot be a part of the app builder agent experience. So I think that's great. I think it's going to reassure the a lot of the, the minds of IT security when they hear about something like this. There's enough uncertainty when it comes to vibe coding and what AI should be allowed to do within a, a particular organization. And I think that this is a, a good way to maybe dip your toe into that kind of thing. Maybe your organization has already kind of embraced the vibe coding nature of like Power Apps, where you can start with a, a Copilot conversation, Copilot within Power Apps, and have it start to build out things. That's getting that's getting more and more popular, and it's it's expanding out the scope of what you can build there. Again, with the Ignite announcements. And one last note about this app builder agent: if you want to try this out in your environment, or maybe you want to only restrict you, you want to only roll it out to particular users. Well. The, the new way of managing this kind of thing, assuming you have this, is Agent 365. It's that brand new thing that will help you manage access to all of your agents, set uh, limits on what those agents can do, a whole slew of things. In fact, I made a video all about this. So if you want to uh, find out more about Agent 365, because this will be coming to a tenant near you, and this is going to be the thing you'll have to learn. Then just click or tap the screen to get started, and I'll see you over there.